Hello, hello, hello. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a Capital Hungry educational webinar on choosing a trading style. Should you scalp, day trade, or swing trade? Your trading style is a direct reflection of your personality. Make it fluid. Now, this may seem like a simple webinar, but as I've talked to more and more traders that have joined Capital Hungry over the years, it's become apparent that many people did not put much thought into selecting their trade style, which the selection of your trade style is one of the most important parts towards your trading journey, right? So how did you choose? Most traders do not realize that they put little thought into the selection of their trading style. Many traders who I've talked to over the years just happen to fall into a trading style by following a certain group, influencer, individual, someone they know, etc. In reality, your trading style should be selected after self-analyzing multiple parameters. You have to understand your lifestyle, schedule, risk level, personality type, and more. Everyone is different in how they react to time-sensitive scenarios. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you should pick a style that is a direct reflection of your personality and time. For example, even for very simple investments, if you ever have some money on the side or you're looking to invest some disposable income, if you were to go to an investment manager, whether it's your bank, whether it's some type of hedge fund and so forth, before you even start to invest with them, they're going to run through a little bit of a checklist and interview with you just to see what your risk levels are, what your goals are, what your timeline is of how long you're looking to invest with them, when you're looking to get some potential returns, what type of returns are you expecting, right? So even before you put any money into a professional hedge fund bank, or investment management service, they're gonna ask you those types of questions. But many people will join the financial markets looking to do something even more difficult, which is trade for themselves, and they won't even go through this own self-analysis. They'll just jump into a trading style because they were watching some stream on YouTube, or they saw some guy on IG posting a certain type of trade, or they were following some cookie cutter course. And this is one of the main reasons that people at the start of their journey can end up wasting months, if not years, because they're trying to force a trade style that is not truly compatible with their schedule, emotional mind state, risk levels, and overall goals, right? So that's something you have to understand that it's very important. <clears throat> now, now, Breaking down the three simple trade styles. Scalping. Scalping is a trade style that involves attacking small pieces of the market in a very short period of time. The run time of your trade can be minutes, sometimes not even surpassing a 30 minute period. Most scalpers will be at the chart for a short time window through session volume and take anywhere from one to five plus scalps depending on their plan rules, and market conditions. Scalping is a style where you have to be at the charts actively in focus and execution mode and ready to make decisions in a short period of time. You need to have a set amount of time available each day or whatever days you choose to trade. Otherwise, if you are not actively paying attention, if you are getting easily distracted, if you have other responsibilities you have to take care of, you're going to end up making foolish mistakes while you're scalping due to the time sensitivity of it. Intraday or day trading. Intraday or day trading is the middle ground between the time sensitivity of scalping and swing trading. This involves positioning yourself into a buy or sell on an asset class through an entire session or multiple daily periods within a week. This style is better suited on an alert and attack-based system rather than constant chart monitoring. Constant chart monitoring, looking for opportunities in a short time window through a session, that is the scalper's attack method. But if you're just constantly watching the charts like a hawk, 
while you're waiting for day trades, there's going to be the increased probability that you enter something too early due to due to uh, making an emotional decision rather than a logical decision. And the opportunities of intraday or day trading are not as abundant as scalping. So just sitting at the charts for five hours waiting for a day trade is a waste of time. You should still be doing your analysis. You should still be planning your trades, but then you should be setting alerts and then be fluid throughout the day where once an alert gets triggered, you have the time period that may be a few minutes or 30 minutes to enter that position, right? Swing or positional trading. Swing trading is holding trades for an extended period of time. That can be weeks, months, or years, depending on your analysis and prediction. Swing trading opportunities are far less abundant versus scalping. But the winning swing trades have much higher reward, just take a much longer time. So the common denominator we're really starting to notice between the trade styles is time sensitivity. To be honest, a lot of the universal methods that go into analysis, whether it's an analyzing market structure, price action, macro fundamentals versus micro fundamentals, a lot of that is the same. It, the, the way you're reading price action on the one minute time frame to scalp is no different than the way you're reading price action on the four hour time frame to day trade or enter a swing trade. The only difference is time sensitivity. The methods to read price action, to break down candlesticks, to analyze market structure, to analyze areas of interest, it's all the same. It just becomes a fractal of the previous time frame. Like you're zooming in the time frames more for scalping, right? The real, the real difference between these trading styles is time sensitivity. Time sensitivity for two things. One, how fast you need to make decisions on executing, trade managing, and uh, potentially being involved in the market. Two, the time sensitivity of how long it takes a trade to set up or a trade to play out. Those are the real big differences between the trade styles. But those are monstrous differences that are dependent on your schedule day to day and your personality. But no single trade style is perfect. All of them have their pros and cons. So let's do a style breakdown. <clears throat> First, with scalping, the time frames. Time frames being how long you may be involved in a trade, waiting for a trade to set up, waiting for a trade to play out the time frames you may be looking at the charts technically. It's really within one hour down to one minute. There's no point while you're scalping to really get some weekly or monthly bias or to look at even the daily trend, especially when you're looking to scalp through a specific session. You're looking to get very small pieces of the market consecutive times, whether it's 20, 30, 40 pips, and the runtime of your trade may be within minutes. You're not even going to be holding for an entire session. What are the pros of scalping? Well, the pros of scalping is because you're dealing with smaller pip ranges and a shorter time duration of trades, it's abundant in opportunities. Also, you're in and out of the market in a short period of time, meaning there's not a lot of emotional attachment to a trade compared to when you're holding a swing trade for two months and you're watching a pullback that's taken place for three weeks against you. A lot more potential to be emotionally manipulated, potentially start to see some confliction against your trade idea and position. Where with scalping, you shouldn't really be that emotionally attached to a trade that the execution was five minutes and the exit was 20 minutes. Also, every single trade style requires some level of patience, but scalping requires less patience than the other trade styles. Scalping is a trade style that needs way more discipline than patience. And the reason why you need way more discipline than patience when scalping is due to the cons, due to the negatives of scalping. What are the negatives of scalping? Well, when you have human greed in play alongside the potential of very abundant opportunities, it's very easy to get lost in the noise and start to overtrade. It's very easy to take a losing trade and start to revenge trade because you could say, oh, we could flip again 20 pips right here, or we could do a little bounce 15 pips here. I can quickly make it back. Because of how easy it is to get greedy while scalping, 
how much it's easier to get influence to over trade and revenge trade due to the abundance of opportunities. It's very easy to spiral down. And this is where people will take dozens of trades, hundreds of trades in a short period of time and crash an account they were building for months in the matter of a single session. So the cons of scalping is that it's very easy to over trade. It's easy to revenge trade. It's easy to spiral out of control. And you have to have very strong discipline rather than strong patience. What do I mean by that? Well, for scalps, yes, you need some level of patience in any trade style or trade idea, but less patience is required because scalps can set up within minutes. The trade can play out within minutes, especially if you're trading through a session, you have economic events in play, you're following your pre-plan analysis. You need strong discipline to be able to know when to exit the market and no longer take any more trades. You need to have the strong discipline that stops the potential to over trade or revenge trade. Whether that's a strong discipline to follow some three strike rule, whether that's some strong discipline that you have a rule if you lose twice in a row, you completely leave the charts. Very strong discipline is needed to be a consistent long-term scalper. If you find yourself easily losing focus, getting distracted very easily, starting to make emotional decisions very easily, scalping is going to be your enemy rather than a proper trading style that can bring you profit, right? But if you're someone who can focus for a consistent period of time, one to two hours, follow your plan, be very disciplined in your decisions, cut your losses quick, milk out some of the scalp wins, follow your rule of only taking an X amount of scalps, your pre-planned trade ideas, then your, and also make the two to three hour time window needed a day or whatever days you choose to scalp to be there, then scalping could be perfect for you, right? So some notes with scalping. You need very fast decision-making. You have to be able to make decisions fast and you have to be able to make decisions fast while working under pressure because you have money on the line. These trade positions depend on your decisions. You may be trade manager. You may enter a trade within one minute. Two minutes later, it's in drawdown. One minute later, it's back to break even. This shift in price action may cause you to make a decision to close at break even or accept a minor loss instead of taking a full stop loss. Or you may have to make a fast decision of when to exit the market. You are looking for 50 pips. You're 30 pips in profit. You're starting to notice some lower time frame rejections. You're starting to notice some exhaustion. You make the executive decision to take some profit and close that trade. This may seem pretty simple when I'm saying it now after the fact, but in the moment when these decisions need to be made in seconds within minutes, if you're not fast enough, if you're starting to crack under pressure, then scalping is not going to be for you, right? But some people, some people thrive under pressure. Some people love to make decisions fast. Some people do not get negatively impacted when they have to make a decision fast under pressure and be disciplined with it. Everybody's personality type is so different. That's why you can't just start scalping because you saw some guy scalping on YouTube or someone scalping on IG. You don't know their personality. You don't know their experience levels. You don't know the rules that they follow. You don't know how disciplined they are. For them, it may be smooth sailing. For you, it's going to be a nightmare trying to scalp. Right? Day trading, time frame. Daily four hour to one hour for how long trades may take to set up, how long it may take to execute and hold the trade, potential time frames you're going to be analyzing. Execution, you can drop lower, but you don't really need to be doing one minute analysis of where uh, of structure for a day trade, right? You're going to be doing your analysis and identifying key liquidity zones, structure and trend from daily four hour to one hour. And then when it comes to execution point, if an alert gets base, uh, if an alert gets triggered off, then you could drop down a lower time frame if you want a better entry. But even for trade management on a day trade, you're not going to be looking at the one minute time frame anymore, right? So time frames for day trade, daily four hour, one hour. Pros: larger rewards versus scalping, potential for a better risk versus reward, more room for the trade to breathe, right? Scalping. Even though it's abundant in opportunities, because they're quick jabs at the market, it's very hard to get some one to five RR scalp. 
having one to two, one to three RR scalps is, is still very doable. One to two being the most realistic for scalping opportunities if you're taking three to five scalps through a session, right? With day trading, you have the potential with the day trading ranges you're looking to take advantage of and holding a trade for a longer period of time, where if market conditions are solid, you're not going to be looking for a 20, 30, 40 pip TP. You're going to be looking for a 80, 100, 150 pip TP. So you have the obvious potential for better risk versus reward, right? What are the cons of day trading? It's limited opportunities. You're not going to have a day trade available every time you look at the chart. Unless you're just emotionally validating something to yourself. Like, oh, maybe we can flip here. If you're actually doing real, accurate day trade analysis of favorable setups following the fundamentals and technicals, you may only get three to five day, three day trades in an entire week on one to two pairs where they were clean setups following your analysis. Where a scalper could get three to five trades in a single session. Where the swing trader might get three to five setups in a month or quarter right? So every trading style has its pros and cons. Day trade. Also, the timing of trades is a con. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're doing your scalp analysis and you're at the charts for a two to three hour window, you're looking for entry points that can be potentially retested or revisited within that two to three hour window, which creates more abundant opportunities. When you're day trading, you might do your analysis. Like for example, you want gold to pull back 200 pips, retest the key previous high, and then you want to see buys from there. You may be the most available during the New York session where you look at charts here and there, but that analysis you are looking for, it may play out over the late London hours when you're sleeping. It may play out during Asian session hours when you're not even at the charts. You're with your family or friends or taking care of your kids or cooking dinner, right? This is why the timing of trades on day trades can be a con. You pretty much have to be following an alert-based system. And when your analysis is getting triggered that it's potentially time to execute and you get that alert, you pretty much have to be ready during that time period. It could be in the middle of the night. It could, be, it could be while you're sitting around on the couch. It could be while you're at the computer looking at the charts. But you pretty much have to be ready to execute then. With day trading, a lot more patience is needed versus scalping. More patience for the day trades to set up. More patience regarding trade management of watching how the trade develops over the course of hours and multiple sessions. More patience for the trade to play out and hit take profit or stop loss. It's a longer time duration, <clears throat> right? So some notes for day trading. It's more for patient individuals, those who can control their stress or like to have controlled stress and not spike their cortisol and stress levels. It's more based on an alert-based system where you need to have the flexible schedule on your alert-based system to be able to execute. Yes, you can use limit orders and stop orders, but even then, it's still an alert-based trading system, <clears throat> right? Swing trading. The time frames are the daily, weekly, and monthly of when you're expecting trades to set up, trades to play out, the run time for an average swing trade, where the main time frames you're going to be doing analysis on as well. What are the pros of swing trading? It has the largest reward potential. You're less likely to overtrade, you're less likely to lose big, and you have better drawdown control. Your risk versus reward on a swing trade on minimum will be like a 1 to 8, 1 to 10, 1 to 15. Your take profit may be 1,500 pips while your stop loss is like 100 pips or 200 pips, right? So your trade has way more room to breathe, way higher reward potential, you're less likely to keep entering small trades here and there if you're strict, strictly a, tr a swing trader, aka less likely to overtrade. You're less likely to lose big unless you're really over leveraging an account on a single swing trade. What are the cons of swing trading? It has the most limited opportunities. There's not going to be great swing trades, high probability swing trades available every session, every day, not even every week, not even every month. It may take two months, 
for your major monthly supply level where you want to short an asset class to get retested. Then it may take another two months of us going into profit and earning something. Extremely high patience levels are needed. Not as, not as high discipline is needed as scalping because you're, one, forced to very low, limited, low quantity, limited number of opportunities. Two, if you're over trading as a swing trader, then something's clearly wrong there, right? Because you're only supposed to be executing every couple of weeks, months, or dependent on the pricing of the asset class you're looking at, right? So you don't need as high discipline, but you need extremely high patience. And another con is it's the longest time duration to hit take profit. So going into the next part of this uh, webinar, we're going to be talking about some self-analysis. Your goals of if you're trying to supplement your income, of if you're trying to earn a full-time salary, if you're trying to just earn some investment-worthy trades, whatever it may be, your goals are very important to the choice of trading style you pick. If you're trying to, for example, if you're trying to pay your phone, internet, car insurance, and you're trying to pay a couple of bills outside of not using your job just with trading every month, you probably can't swing trade because you're not going to be able to, one, set up a position or hold a position long enough or have more frequent monthly withdrawals. With swing trading, you might have quarterly withdrawals, six-month withdrawals, or yearly withdrawals, Right? So that is a con as well. Swing trading notes is for very patient individuals, patients who like to avoid any high stress situation. They're very comfortable with a long-term slow and steady approach. They have a very busy schedule where they can't be forced to like look at alerts every single day or be at a two to three hour time window on the charts every single day, but they can enter a position once every two weeks or every month and then monitor it every day, week or month. Right. So when you really break down the styles from the pros and cons, you can see how personal it becomes. That it should be that it should be very related to your personality and schedule. Right. So that goes into our next part of this webinar, your personal analysis. There's a few main things you have to analyze about yourself and be extremely honest with yourself and extremely objective. The more honest you are with yourself, the more objective you are, the better choice of trade style you will make and the increased probability of success you will have because you will be moving as one with your trade style after having significant experience and knowledge developed. So some personal analysis. Personality type. I mainly just break it down and keep it simple is if you're aggressive or is if you're docile. Aggressive versus docile. Assess your personality type and understand if you're an aggressive person or more docile. For example, in my opinion, through specific study of the trading styles, through my own experience with the trading styles, scalping requires a high level of focus and controlled aggression, as you need to make risk management decisions in a very short period of time. If you're a very laid back personality, very docile, very nonchalant, you don't like to be rushed to make decisions. You feel you make bad decisions if it's put under a short time frame or, or put under pressure, then scalping is probably going to be a bad choice for you to make. You get what I'm saying? But if you're someone who has, who can, for example, when they're going through school or at their job, you have, you have those time spurts where for two to three hours, you can be so productive, so focused, so dialed in. You're great at making decisions under pressure for that two to three hour time window. You're great at working under pressure. It puts a fire under your ass and you get even more focused and motivated. Scalping may be for you, especially if you have good discipline in making risk managed decisions, right? Risk level. Due to the increased potential to over trade of scalping, it can be a higher risk. It can be considered a higher risk trading style than swing trading. But swing trading also has its faults where the initial risk may be lower in terms of ex execution, but far more time is needed to profit. So your risk aggression and one, understanding how ballsy you may be also plays a big role on what trading style you should run. 
it goes back and it goes back in terms and ties into your personality type. More times than not, people that are a bit more docile, laid back, like to take their time to make a decision. They already have a natural higher level of patience. This can translate very well into day trading, swing trading, positional trading. Right? Schedule in life. Your schedule, lifestyle, and responsibilities will play a large role in your style choice. For example, someone who has a full-time job or business and a family, like a wife and kids to take care of, they might not have the required time to be at the charts for a two to three hour time window and scalp. Even though they might want to scalp, even though they may have the personality type where they could scalp, their current responsibilities and schedule won't allow it. You can't try to force you can't try to force trading and force market expectations against your day-to-day -day schedule, <clears throat> right? So for them, someone who doesn't have as much time in the day where they can be at the charts for a two to three hour window and scalp through a specific session time, whether they're nine to five is during that time, whether they're at their business during that time, whether they're at school during that time, whether they have to take, their, take care of their kids during that time or do other responsibilities, for them, an alert-based day trading style or a longer-term swing style will be more advantageous. Also, your long-term goals and your general goals are very important. Are you trying to supplement your income and have another income stream on top of your job or business? Are you trying to have a specific goal of just paying X amount of monthly bills? Are you trying to compound long-term and develop long-term wealth? Are you trying to get investment style payouts where you pay yourself out every six to 12 months? All of these goals all play a role in what trading style you should follow. If you're trying to grow and make X amount of profit per month to pay bills, then swing trading will probably not be the best idea for you unless you have swing trades that are positioned in a fashion where you're going to get swing trades playing out every month or few weeks for a payout, which that's probably going to take at least five to 10 years of experience to develop to being that efficient with the swing trading style, right? So every style has its pros and cons. Every style can be successful. Every style has its downfalls. And you have to really analyze yourself and see what's going to be best there. So pick carefully and go through the process. First, our first step of the process, self-analysis. Go through the process of understanding your schedule, risk level, aggression, brain speed. Be honest with yourself and break it down in detail. Then, once you break down yourself in terms of your analysis and uh, your schedule and so forth, once you break down your self-analysis, you can easily identify what trading style suits you best from scalping, day trading, and swing trading. You realize that you're not that patient, but you have strong discipline. You realize that you have the time where you can be at the charts for two to three hours for a couple of days a week. You like to make decisions in a short period of time or you make decisions well under pressure. You enjoy being in and out of the market in a short period of time, then detaching from the charts. Scalp, you're going to naturally fall into the scalping style, right? Or you work a full-time job or you already have your own business you're busy through the New York session, you're asleep during the London session, during the Asian session, you have some family duties of taking care of your kids, cooking dinner, whatever it may be. You don't really like to make decisions in a fast period of time or under pressure anyways, you like to think them through. You're already naturally falling into a day trading or swing trading style, right? After that, trial, research, and error. Growth requires time. Spend at least on the minimum three, preferably six, better even if it's 12 months, potentially longer for swing trading, to adapt with the selected style. Get as much research of how you've been trading with the style as possible. Backtesting your execution, analyzing, executing, journaling, research, study, apply, and repeat. Through this process, you start to trim the fat off your trading style where you can make it more efficient, what you can cut out, what you can further hammer onto and put more pressure into to potentially see more profit and success. After that, you become one. 
achieve symbiosis with your trading style, plan, goals, and system. This is where you will still make inevitable mistakes, but your entire personality shifts where trading becomes second nature and feels quote unquote easier. Easier is in quotes. Trading will never be easy, but it should become easier over time if you're actively spending time learning, growing, changing bad habits, choosing a proper trading style for you, going through the trial research and error, it should become easier than your first three months, your first six months, your first year, your first two years, as you develop more usable experience, right? For me personally, estimating the breakdown, the contributing factors to selecting your trade style is obviously dependent on you. But for me, I would say 40% of it is your personality type. 30% is your scheduling, 20% is your long-term goals, 10% just being an outlier. If you have a certain interest or unique spark in a trading style, maybe you still want to try it. Or if you fear a certain trading style, maybe you're going to stay completely away from it. <clears throat> but anyways, everybody, don't want to be yapping too much. Hopefully that was still an educational, informative, and valuable webinar. Thank you for your time. A lot of people overlook how important trading style selection is, and they just jump into the markets, where I think it's one of the biggest contrib contributing factors for a trader to have a good start on their trading journey and a good foundation to build off of. And if this webinar has you sort of second guessing if the style you're trading right now is the best or thinking about how to refine your current style, then that's exactly the purpose of this webinar and the, exactly the purpose of Capital Hungry, to keep us continuously growing, adapting, getting better, smarter, and sharper. I'll see you guys in around an hour or two for the market update.